Hey what's up guys, Chris Khan here and welcome to another Critics Visuals tutorial. Let's take a look at today's VFX. Pretty cool, now this scene was inspired by the classic um, moments in movies or in video games like Final Fantasy where the main character swords stands somewhere very epically and yeah in this case we have a very darkness inspired lake reflection scene that we're gonna be taking a look so with that said fire up After Effects and let's get started okay guys so this is my After Effects project and if I take a look here you can see um, have a project and the assets that we're going to be using today and of course you can get access to many projects like this one in the critics vault if you guys haven't checked it out i highly urge you to do so and the link will be in the description so let's take a look um so this is my final composition here and this is my vfx comp which we're going to take a look at but before we do that just a quick note guys um i want you to have a full behind the scenes look of how something was created so once i create my vfx i like to do my grading which of course was graded with my cinema lots signature edition and then i just had a vignette just to darken up some things around and then an overall exposure effect to kind of bring up the exposure of the scene then i have my fill noise effect which just puts an overall grain around everything just to merge everything together so with that said let's go to the very interesting part of the tutorial which is the vfx okay guys so i'm gonna close everything so we can see how something is done from the beginning so as you can see guys here i have my sword by itself and if i click on it we have the footage which is basically just an image capture and in this case it works because it's an object if you have a person a character etc you would use obviously a clip that you recorded and you can do one or two things either film it in front of a black screen but make sure that everything is very blurred out and there are no wrinkles so you have a very flat black or dark gray um, or you can use a green screen i had a tutorial on or a discussion more on when i use a black screen versus when i use a green screen if you guys haven't checked it out make sure to do so but in this case I just took a picture, which if I go to my assets, is the original. I took a picture of the sword, as you guys can see right here. And then I just um, changed the aspect ratio and filled the background with just a dark gray. So I can work with the sword. Just rotated it around to make it fit. Let's close this up. And this is what you should have if you just recorded something. 16 by 9 either a character or an object like this one so this is how you do the reflection effect you will duplicate your clip right Control d to duplicate and it's this one so let's do it Control d duplicate awesome and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna select the right take a mask and select the sword right up its shades right there and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select my clip right click transform and flip vertical and as you can see it flipped the sword vertically. If I zoom in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reposition the clip that we just duplicated and make sure that it it's just on the right spot, like this one. Let's close the effect. And as you can see, we have an exact duplicate kind of reflected um, downwards. But as you can see, it looks kind of weird. So what I like to do is select my layer, go to one of these points, and stretch it inwards and as you can see as I do this and bring it up and to do it some more it really stretches the image and makes it look not as perfect let's say and this really helps with doing the reflection effect so if I delete this one and open up the one you can see here so once you have the stretch factor where you want what you do then is hit T to bring up the opacity and as you can see here I dropped it down to 50 because I don't want it to be as um, exposed and clear as the actual object I just want it a bit less transparent so 
that is the transparency and another cool thing you can do is put a mask subtract it if I press M you can see the mask right here and if I press F to bring up the feather value you can see I have a very high feather value but what does it do right so I'm gonna cancel it by removing it from the object as you can see guys this is the object that we had before and this is the object with the mask so what I chose the mask for is to create that cool fading look of the reflection so it's not perfect all the way but it gradually fades into the water which I think it really helps out and because we're playing with transparency and the transparency changes just to be on the safe side I created another um, solid by going to layer new solid created the same color as the background and just making sure that After Effects notes that in the background there is something solid because some effects do not work if you don't have an actual background so we have pretty much done the very beginning part of this effect what's next is I want to create kind of a tint effect so that you can distinct between the darkness on the environment in the lake portion right so what I did is I created a new adjustment layer by going to layer new adjustment layer and of course I'm naming everything as you guys can see because it's so much easier that way and if I go to effects I have a curves adjustment and as you can see I played with the blues by increasing them and re reducing the reds so we create that cool bluish tint effect and of course there's a mask because I don't want the whole thing to be a lake I'm kind of trying to fake it and with that mask and the feathery value, as you can see guys again, we create that very gradual fade in. Pretty cool. And the last thing that I did in this specific layer is I also incorporated a, a fast blur effect, which you go to effects, blur, and fax, fast box blur. And that is just to give a bit of gradual blurriness to the reflection as well. Just an extra thing here and there. And it's really the sum of small things that, that you do that really bring a VFX effect to life. So after I did that, I wanted to add some atmospheric smoke effects, right? Like it's a lake, it's cold, it's dramatic. There's going to be some smoke, folk, atmospheric effect going on. So here's when this gets tricky, guys. Um, After Effects is a compositing software and by bringing many things like explosions and other assets together, you can composite them and make them look as if they are in the same scene together. So After Effects is not a simulation software like 3ds Max or Cinema 4D, etc. So it cannot simulate things like explosions, fire, um, smoke and things like that. So in order to, to pull many effects, you need to have the assets. And that's why I've created the Creatix Vault where you can get access to the projects and get those assets you, so you can pull the same effect off. So what I have here is Cinematic Fog, which I'm going to open up. And as you can see here, I have a cool gradient um, mask again. So I kind of do the gradual fade up to complete the darkness. So let's close the mask. And as you can see here, guys, we have a very cool fog effect or atmospheric smoke that really fills up the scene and it helps sell off the effect and it's literally as simple as dragging it in repositioning it make a cool mask just to make sure that it fits the scene and putting changing the blending mode to screen because when you record things like smoke if i isolate it right here it's usually in front of a black screen so you can then take that off so very simple guys and as you can see it really just does the work for you basically and now we can see how it really fits in with the reflection and now we can really start seeing the scene if that makes any sense and making sure that our effect really starts forming up so after I did that I created the two light strips on the sword and that's very specific to this scene because I have a sci-fi sword and it needs some sci-fi effects, right? So in order to do this, I just created a new solid by going to layer, new solid. And if I actually close it off and open up the mask of this one, you can see again, it's just a mask. 
shaping it to the way that I want and then putting some coloring effects like of the tint effect to change, change the white into the purple and some glow effects just to um, you know put a cool glow effect and I'm not going too much into detail in these things because one it's per specific scene and then this you cannot really just copy paste the same values and expect to have the same result you can see the effects and the order and the composition and then you need to play around with your values to make your scene work so with that done we are ready to do that cool water wave looking effect that you guys have seen so this is called the ripple effect so what i did is i created a new adjustment layer and i went to effect distort and I pressed ripple and if I open this up you will see what it does and here we have the effect now very important guys again we need to create a mask with a feathering value to gradually fade off the effect so we don't have it affect the whole thing because what ripple does is basically creates you have a center and it starts rippling through that center but we only want to affect this portion of the water because not our whole composition is water basically right so what we have is the kind of the same mask as we had for the lake color and the other things and we have the same thing for the ripple and as you can see guys these are my ripple settings right here i have the center very close to where the sword is supposedly touching the water and these are my settings radius, radius 10 wave speed of course creates the waves and how fast it goes the wave width which what that does is um it calculates the distance between each wave basically or if in simple terms like the where the bump is as you can see we have one here and the next one is here etc so that creates that width and then the height is how big of a bump you have so with that done i'm ready to pre-compose and just do the final effects like the color grading that we talked before and that is it guys, the effect is done. Hey everyone, Chris here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check more awesome VFX and film stuff, do check out the channel. And of course, do not forget to visit the Creative Store full of goodies like free assets, cinema signature lots, the black box, or even becoming the elite and gaining access to the Creative Vault so you can take your work to the next level. Hit that subscribe, slash so notification buttons, all kinds of things, and I'll see you on the next one. Till then, Unleash your creativity.